Coming up on OU Nightly, we're tracking another round of rain for this evening and then a big cold blast for the weekend. I'll have the latest timeline. Palestine will be free! Palestine will be free! The war in Israel impacting the OU campus. Plus... Therefore, the Honorable Mike Johnson of the state of Louisiana, having received a majority of the votes cast, is duly elected Speaker of the House of Representatives for the 118th Congress. A Speaker of the House is selected. We have more from our Washington Bureau. This is OU Nightly. In the heart of the OU campus, a war of words over the war in the Middle East. Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Bailey Coyle. And I'm Snowforth. We'll get right to the Palestine protest right here on campus. But first, important weather information you need to hear. Campus is under a flood watch right now and other big weather changes are on their way. Let's get right over to OU Nightly meteorologist Josh Duncan for a first look at the forecast. We had a break from the rain for much of the day today, but now another round is moving on in. Here it comes from south central Oklahoma moving north and off to the northeast. Some heavy rain moving into the Ardmore area. It's starting to come to an end in Lawton. And then taking a closer view of the metro, some scattered rain across the north metro. It's more widespread across the south metro, and this is going to be covering the entire OKC metro here over the next few hours. So here's how it looks this evening. The highest chance of rain through about 7 o'clock. Then the chances start to drop off overnight, but still can't rule out an isolated shower thunderstorm. And then we're tracking some cold air for the weekend and the first freeze for parts of Oklahoma. Those details coming up. Thanks, Josh. And the latest from the Israeli Hamas war now. And tonight we know the situation is dire. A United Nations humanitarian agency says it cannot continue to help people without a cease of fire. And right here on campus, a war of words broke out this morning during a rally. OU Nightly's Mecca Thompson joins us live from where it all started, Dale Hall. Mecca. Snow Bailey, it was a very emotional morning here on campus. Students came out to show their support for the people of Palestine. Now it all took place right here outside of Dale Hall at 1030. Palestine will be free! Palestine will be free! OU students gathered outside of Dale Hall and walked down the South Oval to protest for the civilians and fallen people of Palestine. While the students chant, bombs continue to fall half a world away as the war between Israel and Hamas enters its third week. Continue speaking for Palestine. Here in Norman, over 6,000 miles away, the protest was organized by OU Student Coalition for Palestinian Liberation, with a large crowd of supporters in attendance. Students are emotional when thinking about the number of families separated on both sides and the violence that has broken out, resulting in mass casualties. The fact that people are being separated from their families, it's atrocious. It's atrocious. It's, it's, I can't. I can't be doing it anymore. Sorry. I'm about to start getting emotional. I'm just strongly against genocide, babies being bombed. Protesters asked OU's president to take action. On the other hand, a student with Israeli roots condemned the protest. In the same way, though, I believe Israel has the right to defend itself. In this conflict specifically, I don't think it's the right time to protest to free Palestine when really this, these protests were never going on prior to Hamas attacking Israel and Israel defending itself. Bombing home. Bombing babies, bombing home. Another local impact or the, on the war in Israel, we know that soldiers from Fort Sill and Lawton are being deployed in the coming weeks. We'll keep you updated on that situation as well. Reporting live on campus, Mecca Thompson, OU Nightly. Thanks, Mecca. Big news from the nation's capital, too, as the U.S. House finally elects a speaker. House Republicans rallied behind Representative Mike Johnson from Louisiana in a vote on the floor today. OU Nightly is the only collegiate newscast with a reporter on the ground in Washington, and our Kevin Palomino has the Oklahoma delegation reaction from a Washington bureau. 
After an intense political climate that left Taj Republicans in a stalemate for three weeks long, they finally unanimously elected Representative Mike Johnson from Louisiana, making him the new Speaker of the House. Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, the Honorable Mike Johnson. Winning all 218 votes and all five of the Oklahoma House members' support, Representative Josh Burkeen, who was loyal to Jim Jordan during the earlier stages of the Speaker's race, says Johnson had what it took to unify the party. Oh, I'm uh, excited. Mike Johnson's the right guy. And Representative Tom Cole praising Johnson's reputation, saying, Mike has a really splendid personal reputation. I don't know anyone in Congress who doesn't trust Mike on every issue. Hearn. Johnson. Representative Kevin Hearn, who ran for Speaker of the House against Johnson, took Gaylord News, helping Israel fight the war against Hamas, is top priority as House members head back to regular order. Exchange, I mean, we still have to get, uh, you know, make sure we get the, the Hamas resolution or Israel resolution condemning Hamas, and then we've got to make sure that we get the uh, supplemental done for Israel to make sure that their uh, Iron Dome is replenished. Yeah. And the atmosphere is definitely more relaxed here on Capitol Hill, at least on the Republican side. However, the government is set to run out of money on November 17th, making the U.S. face yet another looming government shutdown. Reporting for Gaylord News in Washington, D.C., I'm Kevin Palomino. And Speaker Johnson's first or of business, the House is voting today on a resolution to support Israel in their war against Hamas. A big bust by narcotics officers breaks up a human sex trafficking ring in Oklahoma City. Investigators from the Oklahoma Bureau of Narcotics say Fang Jing and Jin Lin ran a sex trafficking ring inside a northwest Oklahoma City home. Police arrested Jing in New York, where he lives permanently, and detectives are still searching for the second suspect, Lin. Between October 2022 and February 2023, officials say a dozen women were trafficked at the home. Investigators say the two suspects were also illegal marijuana farm managers. As all other criminal acts have followed these criminal organizations, these growers, including sex trafficking, uh, gambling operations, even ketamine and other drug trafficking that we've tied back to these marijuana farms that are run by these Asian males. Um, all of which are, are, are tied back to organized crime out of China. Detectives say many of the clients were managers at the illegal farms. And former President Donald Trump faces a fine after testifying in his civil trial, his silver fraud trial. Kennedy Patterson has that in the rest of today's international national headlines from the News Center. Former President Donald Trump has 30 days to pay a $10,000 fine for violating a gag order. This comes after the judge in his civil fraud trial says that Trump insulted his law clerk. Trump is denying the violation, saying he was talking about witness Michael Cohen. This is Trump's second fine for violating the gag order. All charges, including murder, have been reinstated against a Philadelphia police officer who was accused of fatally shooting Eddie Irizarry. A judge dismissed the seven charges against Officer Mark Dial just a month ago. Dial has been taken into custody and is being held without bail. The off-duty pilot accused of trying to cut off a plane's engine mid-flight told investigators he took magic shrooms two days before the incident. Joseph Emerson has pleaded not guilty to more than 80 charges of attempted murder. The FBI is still investigating whether Emerson was under the influence during Sunday's flight. In Bailey, Snow, Scholastic says it is reversing its decision to separate books based on race and gender at school book fairs. Thank you, Kennedy. A Category 5 hurricane is battering Mexico right now. Coming up, we'll take you into the storm and tell why research say it's such a record breaker. And evacuations are underway in California, the latest on, on a wildfire there coming up in Earth Report.
A Category 5 hurricane slams into Mexico, wiping out all communications, and California's Death Valley is looking like an oasis. Drake Foley has that and more in today's Earth Report. Thanks, Bailey and Snow. Officials in southern Mexico are calling it a nightmare scenario as all communications are knocked out by a Category 5 hurricane. Hurricane Otis made landfall in Acapulco early this morning with winds of 165 miles per hour. Researchers say it broke records because of how quickly it intensified. Mexico's president says the impact of the storm is not clear because emergency crew communications are down but so far, no deaths have been reported. Evacuation orders have now been lifted for residents in Verde, California, following an overnight brush fire. Fire crews say at least 40% of the flames have been contained. They say the blaze started just after 11 p.m. local time, consuming about 50 acres. The hottest and driest area in North America has come to life. Two months after Hurricane Hillary dumped a year's worth of rain, wildflowers, and lakes have sprung in Death Valley. The National Park Service says the Badwater Basin, the lowest point in North America, is now home to a temporary lake. Park officials say this once in a decade event and is expecting the floodwater lake to dry up in a few weeks. Also, a poll conducted by the Pew Research Center shows that 71% of Americans think climate change is already causing harm. Snow and Bailey, back to you. Thanks, Drake. Halloween weekend is almost here and Airbnb is cracking down on parties. Stay tuned and we'll tell you the company's plan to stop Halloween festivities. We're still trekking rain across campus, plus new data is in on the weekend cold. Just how low the wind chills will go, coming up. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday as the rain moves back into campus here. It's coming up from southern Oklahoma and some of the brighter colors on radar, the yellows and the oranges indicating some heavier rain starting to make its way in to the south and east sides of Norman right now. This will continue to overspread the metro here over the next couple of hours and taking a look at the rainfall totals over the past couple of days. These have been some really good rains for Oklahoma. One to two inches for most areas in the metro and across most of the state. Look at this broad swath of some drought busting rains potentially and some isolated locations went as high as three to four to locally five inches of rain so far. And again, there's still this round to go. So here comes the rain this evening. It'll start to move to the east of I-35 after we get past six or seven o'clock and then still some isolated showers and thunderstorms hanging around the metro as the heavy rain moves off into far eastern Oklahoma and out into Arkansas by tomorrow morning. So Thursday, will be dry across campus. And in terms of additional rainfall totals, a quarter inch, possibly a half inch here in the metro, and then one to two to three inches for places across southeastern Oklahoma. So there will be another slight risk of flooding down in that part of the state. Then tomorrow again, it's dry with a clearing sky, a high of 79 degrees, some great fall weather headed our way with south winds a bit breezy, but then our attention turns to this, a major blast of some cold air, our strongest cold front of the season thus far. It arrives Friday morning. That's when the wind shift occurs, but the really cold stuff is lagging behind just a little bit. That'll be moving in during the day Saturday and especially for the second half of the weekend on Sunday. So take a look at this wind chills Sunday afternoon will be in the 20s for most of the state of Oklahoma. It is going to feel more like the middle of January than this time in October. Again, we're getting close to November, but still a big shock to the system coming our way and some chances for moisture as well. Some scattered showers will be moving in during the day Saturday. It's not a washout on Saturday. Then again, as colder air continues to filter in on Sunday, there is a chance that there will be some isolated areas of some freezing rain and sleet across far northwestern Oklahoma. We're going to keep an eye on it. It's not looking like a major winter storm, but take a look at this. The morning lows by next week are going to be down 
below freezing. So get ready. A major cold snap is on the way. Here's that seven day forecast. A nice day tomorrow. The cold front comes through on Friday and then the winds turn to the north and then those rain chances for the weekend before Halloween, a high of 49 degrees. But that morning low in the 20s and trick or treating probably in the low 40s. And we didn't really get much of a fall. We just skipped right over it. We really did. I'm really glad that my Halloween costume is a warm one. Thank you, Josh. And with Halloween right around the corner, Airbnb is launching a new artificial intelligence driven program to crack down on parties. The company says the system is designed to identify and target users who may be using the service to host parties. The new AI anti-party system uses data including distance and time before the res reservation to identify potential parties. Using attempting, users attempting to book an Airbnb through Halloween may experience some restrictions on one or two night reservations. And Oklahoma football takes flight this weekend in the Sunflower State. OU Knightley's Abby Williams has how this mashup hits home for some Sooners. That's right, one Sooner gets the chance to show off this weekend in his home state for the people who mean the most to him. And once OU Volleyball able to stay dry in a hurricane, I'll have those exciting highlights and more next in sports. I'm Abby Williams and it's time for sports. Oklahoma football heads to Lawrence this weekend to take on the Jayhawks, but this homecoming reunion means a little more to one sooner. Desan Terry reflects on how his two seasons at Kansas shaped him into the player he is today. It helped me grow as a player because when I first got in, like they taught me things about like, like I said, like just about small things about the game of football, like backfield sets, things like that. Um, I didn't know a lot about that. Um, so that helped me slow the game down to um, slower pace and it helped me grow as a man because um, I mean we did things it was just every every college I've been to um, they always try to help you grow as a man so and that was the first one that I had been to. Jaron Kanick was the number one ranked recruit in the state of Kansas for the class of 2022. Now the Kansas native has the opportunity to be a captain in front of friends and family this weekend. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's 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 an honor to at a place like this, and you know, just be able to go back home and, and, uh, and wear that, and you know, be, be named as a leader of, of my teammates. It definitely means a lot to me, and you know, obviously my mom thought it was pretty cool too. Oklahoma softball is usually raining home runs until actual rain spoils those plans. Another Oklahoma battle series has been postponed for weather. The game originally scheduled for tonight is being moved to tomorrow at six. And Tulsa Volleyball got served in Norman with a loss. The Sooners pulled a reverse sweep last night against the Golden Hurricane, rallying back to win the match in five sets. Sophomore outside hitter Taylor Preston posted a career night with whopping 28 kills. The OU men's golf team says Aloha Hawaii to defend their title. The Sooners wrap up their fall season at the Kanapoli Classic in Hawaii tomorrow through Saturday, where they seek to win the tournament for the second year in a row. The Thunder look to make a storm in the Windy City as they head to Chicago for their 2023 season opener tonight. The NBA Power Rankings list Oklahoma City at 18, and this young roster should be electric this season. Bailey Snow. Thanks, Abby. And animals in London are getting excited for Halloween. When we return, learn what makes these animals Halloween treats special. I'm Savannah Simmons at the OU Nightly Update Desk. The husband of a murdered Macomb mother is now behind bars in connection to her death. Pottawatomie County deputies say Frank Byers shot and killed Michaela Meave and left her body in a ditch. Byers was taken to the county jail early this morning on several counts, including first degree murder. Snow, Bailey, back to you. Thanks, Savannah. Animals at the London Zoo are getting ready for Halloween. The zookeepers are putting the animals' favorite snacks and pumpkins to give their treats a festive twist. Polly Dolly and Priscilla, three tortoises, slowly enjoyed their Halloween treat. While the tigers, Zach and Crispin, quickly ate their cinnamon and nutmeg filled pumpkins. And this rainy day is not clearing up yet and cold weather is on its way. Let's have one last look at the weather, Josh.
Yeah, moderate rain now falling here in Norman. And take a look at this. Some of the oranges and reds on the radar. This is some heavy rain right now across eastern Cleveland County, moving into western Pottawatomie County. And it is going to continue to rain here over the next couple of hours before this whole system gradually makes its way into eastern Oklahoma. And then you're right about that cold. Here it comes. The weekend, 55 Saturday, 44 Sunday with wind chills in the 20s. And it stays cool through early next week. Back to you. Thanks, Josh, and thank you for watching OU Nightly. I'm Bailey Coyle. And I'm Snowforth. Be sure to watch OU Nightly tomorrow, weekdays at 4.30. Good night.